I'm Sam and this is Amazing Travels. Hey guys, this week, it's week seven. I just wanna let you know I have Bianca on the camera behind. So, you know, she's looking a little nervous, but we'll be all right. <laughs> week seven was a fantastic week because I got to spend it in sunny Portugal. I landed in Faro, which was my first stop, which is in Southern Portugal in the Algarve region. And it was just a very cool, like beachy city with a lot of history. My favorite part was how much the Moors kind of shaped that region uh, and really a lot of Portugal. But it was the first time that I really like noticed the architecture when I did one of these free walking tours and that was just absolutely fantastic. From there, I rented a car and decided to do the whole southern coast, west coast of Portugal because they have a brilliant coastline. I mean, it's the edge of the freaking continent so of course it's brilliant and I stopped in a bunch of little cities and towns along the way and just kind of enjoyed the spectacular views. One thing that did happen was I kind of started a hike way too late. They said it would take three and a half hours so I started three and a half hours before sunset I was out there ready to end the, the perfect hike with the culmination of the sun going down in the southern westernmost point of continental Europe except the sun went down before I got there because I took a wrong turn and I was really confident up to the point where like it was getting dark you know without a sweater Sam was not going to survive the night but thankfully I was rescued I was rescued by some people who you will see and then after that I kind of headed to the city yeah it was time to go to Lisbon where if anybody, anything I could like, you know, hail a taxi or an Uber, or whatever it was. Lisbon, super cool city, so much to do. Absolutely love Portugal, it was my first time there and highly, highly, 11 out of 10, recommend. Check it all out here in the week in review. My Airbnb in Faro has been my absolute favorite. Look at those old Portuguese tile designs and it was just very quaint, very cute. But the absolute best part, you went up the stairs and you had this fabulous terrace that was right in the sun overlooking Old Town. I mean, are you kidding me? This is Arco da Vila, one of the medieval gateways into the old city center. An old entranceway built by the Arabs is still visible within. Also, check out these storks. They're a protected animal now in Portugal and they can, well, make their nests anywhere they want, like on the Arco da Vila. We have arrived at the old Roman Forum, which holds the cathedral. A little more about that later. These orange trees, don't eat them. The Camino de Santiago actually passes through Faro. This guy right here, the Afonso III, was the fifth king of Portugal and the one who liberated Portugal from, or Faro, from the Moors. The Romans built the city wall and the Moors made it higher in order to defend themselves against other Moorish tribes and then later the Christians. A bit more of that city wall which is totally enclosing the old city and a lot of it still remains which is pretty awesome. These are two of the most beautiful buildings. This one is actually the Brazilian consulate. Faro has a lot of adorable streets and shopping streets with cafes you can just walk by. This is a famous bakery, Garvi. Eat something. In front of us, we have Teatro Letes, it's still an active theater. This building has five, 400 years of history. Many buildings in Faro still need to be restored. This one here has an old Moorish door. You can tell by the little hand there. Isn't this building just gorgeous? It showcases various styles of architecture. Here's a little blurb on Christopher Columbus. And then it was time to eat something. I found this spot doesn't take credit or debit and it's off a side street. Tapas-ish style Portuguese tapas. I'm excited. I think it's going to be bomb.com. We begin with a cute little bag of bread and olives that I didn't ask for, so that's already a good start. First clams and white wine sauce that has also the same sauce they cook the duck in. Oh my god. And you can see them cooking. You can't really see, but they're cooking like right there on a stove. Wild mushrooms in an almond sauce. I mean, damn, it was delicious. Okay, moving on to the Cathedral of Santa Maria built in the 13th century. It is a national monument. Even though the inside is going through quite a bit of renovations, you can still enjoy a little bit of peace in there. I think the renovators may be having a too much fun. So those are bones we're looking at. People's skulls and bones. If you're creeped out by this, 
I got something better in the works. But first, the very best part of the cathedral, the rooftop view. You get this great view of Ria Formosa and all of the city of Faro. I spent easily 45 minutes up there just soaking it all in. I might be saying this the whole time I'm in Portugal, but the days are just gorgeous. My goodness. Here we have Porta Nova, or New Door, although it was built in the 17th century. And this is the Church of Do Carmo, built in the 18th century. The most famous part about this church is its bones chapel. Human bones, okay? This is a dead guy's head. Or girl, or child, I don't even know. Why are skulls so small? Actually, I do is built with the bones and skulls of dead monks. Insane. Time for a sunset boat tour of the Ria Formosa, recognized as one of Portugal's natural wonders. It's a bunch of barrier islands that connect to the sea through various inlets, and it is just like kind of like an Everglades-y kind of situation. And then there it is, the sunset. Now it was time to like go back into the port, which was a close call with the levels of the water. How far do you have to duck? Very low. <laughs> Very low. Okay. For the first time of Just my life. Barely. <laughs> that was exciting. Off now to the marina, which looked gorgeous as the sun was going down, and we need to have some bitty bitty chicken before leaving Portugal. Not that I was leaving anytime soon. My road trip was just getting started and it kicked off at Faro Beach. Gorgeous. You might see behind me getting to Faro Beach is a one little lane road. You better stop at that red light. I almost didn't. Here is said skinny road. If you're a little more adventurous, you can actually walk over to Faro Beach. It seems right here. And you get this beautiful view of the Formosa. Time to hit that uninterrupted coastline that Portugal has so much of and so many hiking trails along the coast. Whoa! Spectacular, man. Spectacular. One thing that makes the Algarve famous are caves like this, Algarve de Benagil. It's only accessible by swimming, boat, or kayak. And these huge waves today is the reason that sadly I cannot go for a swim in the cave today or rent a kayak. I did get to go see a bunch of nice beaches though, like Benegil Beach. Look how far the rocks jut out of the ocean. Here we're in Ponta da Pedade, here in Lagos. You can climb up to various points or go down into the grottos as I did, as you can see, having a little fun down in the grotto near the water. Now I'm doing some shit I probably shouldn't, going off course here. But I found myself my own little grotto. I promise it was more adventurous than it looked. Like I had to like climb pretty steep. The view. It's all about the view. And the waves of the ocean. And I'm out of breath a little bit. Out of shape a much. It appears that used to be a bridge that would take you along this path here. Up to this rock. It's no longer there, so it's pretty stable here, it seems. Yeah, yeah whatever. Camilo Beach, another gorgeous beach with a bunch of caves you can walk through, as I just did right there. And I was recording myself when I realized, oh my God, my camera's gonna get swallowed by a wave. We have made it to Lagos, Portugal. Beautiful marina here. I walked around as the sun was setting. Has, as you can see, a very nice church and a very cool fortress. But this street was my favorite. I don't know, maybe it was the clouds or the lighting. Just so pretty. We have arrived in Sagres, which that beach is what I surfed on a few days later. Fortaleza de Sagres is a fortress that originally was built in the 16th century, but was greatly affected by the Lisbon earthquake of 1755, like a lot of things in the country, by the way. It's been restored. I am a soldier marching. I am a soldier marching. But really, that's what you picture when you're here. Like, oh my god, look at these cannons. Heavy artillery, baby. Cistern Tower, constructed any time between 1443 and 1460. We are touching history. Licking it is not so good. 
Something is brewing down there. I don't know what it is. I couldn't read the sign. It was only in Portuguese. Just kidding. It's in English. I just also I just couldn't figure out the font. It's Chamber of Sound. Turn on by the tide. An insane amount of guys fish off the cliffs, off the coast of not just a fortress, but pretty much anywhere on that coastline. Here we are in Fortaleza de Beliche. I found this really great trail that goes all the way down to the water, which is where I had lunch. It was perfect. Looking towards Miami and sending kisses. Here we have Beliche Beach, which is a major surf spot and there were surfers everywhere. Inspiring, we have made it to the southwesternmost point in continental Europe, and it was time for me to start my hike. I found my first marker, turn left. Good thing I took a picture of what all the markers meant because I've never been on a real hike. Well, I guess I have. Maybe I haven't. I have some water and food, it should be fine. <laughs> I have in Colorado, but there were actual people around. We followed this route, which was the fisherman's route and the historic route. And look at just the views. I mean, I'm in awe. Pro tip, this means wrong way. X, correct way. These people leave stones saying like, oh, like good job, bro. Going the right way. Spectacular view number. I can't, I don't even count that high. Real rocky here for my very normal, not hiking sneakers. And them signs are getting tinier and tinier. Can you spot it? Let me zoom in on that for you. Boom, on that tiny rock. Yeah, they were getting a little difficult and the cliffs were getting even steeper, but look at the greenery. I'm in a real pickle. I seem to have gone too far and I am closest six kilometers away from a city a village i don't know if i'll be able to get a taxi back to my car but i think it's my best bet because to go back it'll take me another two hours and it's uh seven kilometers or where i was supposed to go eight kilometers even the camera's lost yeah i came all the way from that far point all the way over there and I hikey started running after I realized the sun was going to go down and I was going to be without a sweater and freezing. So I got lucky enough to run down the trail and find Emily and Guillaume, these very nice French people who took me to the nearest town where I grabbed a cab and was able to get my car here at the lighthouse point where I started. Even saw the sun go down just a little bit. The very next day, my adventure awaited me. I was going surfing, baby. All right, baby. It's the Norwegians. My personal instructor, Miguel. Three hours of surfing. I hadn't done that since, well, about 10 years ago. So it was quite hard on the body. But then I got to take another little road trip down here to Amado Beach. And I finally hit my next stop, Tomar, Portugal, which is a medieval city that is very very famous for one thing the knights templar it has a bunch of little squares and beautiful little streets and cafes but what you're there for other than these churches something cool i just noticed about the sidewalks of tomar they have the symbol of the templar like in the cobbles so check it out famous for of course the convent of christ which is a world heritage site this was founded in the year 1160 and built over five centuries. There's a bunch of courtyards, amazing tile work, an incredible amount of detail. This rotunda dates back to the 1100s and it is extremely well preserved. Main cloister here. I don't know if I'm supposed to go up this staircase, but there was an arrow saying something and I'm just going to do it until they tell me no. Yeah, I was not supposed to be up there, but I got out just in time. This is a dormitory where the Templars used to sleep. It was enormous. This is what they look like inside. Pretty modest, but there was a place to read. The Bible, I'm guessing, or, I don't know, military maps. Castle walls are what surrounds the Convent of Christ, and this is the wall you can see here. The convent shows you how they slept, how they ate. I mean, it's fantastic. Well worth it. Walk along the ancient wall of the castle, where I'm sure soldiers used to boom, set up. Along those castle walls, you have the perfect view of the entire city of Tomar. Oh, take it in. This is a pastéis de nata, which is very, very common to eat in Portugal. And this is a chorizo bread, also very common to eat. We are now in Lisbon. We have arrived. That was the famous streetcar. And of course, 
the very busy streets. Oh, we get the changing of the guard here. Anticlimactic. And there is the Iron Tower, which is a tourist trap, but also part of local public transport. We already know if it's free, I'm taking it. Now, I know you heard that flaky crust. It was very, very yummy. Commerce Square, one of the main squares in Lisbon. A lot of times they host big events and you are right by the water, so it's really nice. When in Portugal, you have to have one of these fish cakes. It's basically cod and potato deep fried. It's just a very common, and I'm not a big fish eater, but it was pretty good. Also, you should try this cherry wine. It's made, homemade a lot of the time, and it was pretty good. One of Lisbon's many viewpoints due to the hilliness of the city. Here we have the main cathedral. Some would say I'm unlucky, but I'm going to call it good luck that I just got shot on by a bird. <laughs> Thankfully, I was saved by this, the Church of St. Anthony. I was able to get in there and wash off. It was also a very nice church inside. Ooh, I found a peacock. They want to charge me 10 euro to get into the castle. And look at the audacity they have to print out this map as pixelated as they have printed out. For 10 euros a pop, they can afford to reprint that. Want to see my two favorite viewpoints in the city? Here's Graça viewpoint, and here's the other one, back to back, Sao Pedro de la Cantara viewpoint. I don't know how well I'm pronouncing these things, by the way, just a total disclaimer, probably very wrong. Anyone ever seen an outdoor escalator before? Because now I have. <laughs> the very pretty Rocio train station. The city has a lot of hills, a lot of stairs. It's a glute city. Just down the river, we have Belem Tower. It's 500 years old, and it served as a point of departure and arrival for Portuguese explorers, also a UNESCO heritage site. This is a monument to all those sailors, and of course, we have Jeronimo's Monastery, erected in the early 1500s. It's so enormous, the video does it absolutely no justice. If you are liking my adventures, as always, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you next Monday. There's the production team right there. Ayo. <laughs> Working these biceps. That's well, right. Just this one, actually, because it was like. Yeah. And B's um, a little teaser to next week's episode of some amazing travels.